What's up guys, welcome back to the Hero Section Design Challenge. This time we're going to be taking on challenge number three, which is a 3D illustration. So we're just going to try and get some kind of 3D going in a hero, it can be anything we want. We have found these really cool, where are we, here we go, 3D planets, which look pretty snazzy. And Nick, of course, has written us some copies. We're thinking this is going to be about the tonic planetarium, a fictional planetarium, and it's going to be aimed at like kids and families to get them learning about the solar system and space. So we're just going to get straight in. Now, I usually say let's um, wireframe it, but I think this is essentially our wireframe, right? We've just got this stuff. We've got our call to action is going to get tickets. We've got some images here. So <clears throat> for the sake of trying to do a quick video for you guys, I am just going to get cracking. This is a nice color background, but I actually think that we go a bit darker like this for space. And then if we have a look quickly, we just grab a copy of one of these guys. I'm thinking we're going to whack some planets around. Maybe something like this, we'll push this guy a bit further back and we'll kind of get like a <clears throat> like a curved effect, like they are, you know, orbiting, that's what planets do, right? And then this guy, kind of size, looks all right. So maybe something like this, and we have our text on the left, of course we'll have a nav bar up the top, um, and we found this really nice font, which right now doesn't look amazing. But it's got this really nice weight. So this is called Spectre. And if I put this into caps and we just start bumping it up, right? Because we've got such a short headline, I think <clears throat> we're, it's okay to make this big. See, already this is quite cool. It looks like it's going to appeal to kids and families. Um, and then in terms of thinking about like creating a typography system, um, we don't usually do that like straight off the bat. We have one in our document ready to go. Um, but when we're doing like design concepts, we don't want to be restricted by scale. We just want to kind of design what looks and feels right. And then we'll figure out a scale afterwards and we'll kind of reconfigure everything. So this is just kind of getting stuff done by eye is the is the idea here. So I can bump this up to 200 and just go absolutely massive. Uh, I think that already looks cool. Let's drag in our subhead here and let's make it white for now. And let's maybe put it in 21. Let's just drag that across here for now. That looks kind of cool. But I think we're going to end up knocking this back a bit. Uh, we need a call to action, which is going to be get your tickets. So let's just make it white for now. And I think let's bold it up a bit and we'll turn it into an auto layout. We're going to go to 24. I want a nice big button. Again, like family, kids, like you can go big. You don't need to be like really clean and minimal. Uh, let's go all caps, whack it into bold. And of course, we're just going to shift X auto layout. We'll give it a background. And I think maybe something like one of these guys over here. And then let's give the text color this background here. And that looks awful at the moment. Um, because it's big, I'm going to go big padding, 40 left and right. 24 top and bottom, 100 rounders corners just to round it out. Nice massive button that looks maybe a bit too big. Let's try 20 top and bottom. Let's try drop that text to 21. That feels a bit more natural. And I'm going to auto layout these two, get these two a bit tighter. So we've got 16 between them, and I'll make another auto layout and maybe go 40. I will kind of want. I really want them all the same. If I just show you, if we ungroup that and we've got 40 between them, it's a bit almost disjointed. So I think if we put the text together, we kind of, because it's such a short headline, we kind of want to read this as one piece, I think, personal preference. Uh, I'm also going to add a full stop there because I'm thinking we don't want to put some stars around this and we can use like white circles and then that's a bit of a connect. Um, which no one will really care about or get or notice, um, but it's important to me. So we need a logo. So size 18, obviously this is not how you design logos, um, but for the sake of moving quickly, we're doing it this way. Let's bump this up to bold, tonic planetarium, that's cool, let's auto lay out this. Eight pixels between is good because we're always thinking everything we're doing is divisible by eight or four, and that's 
feels okay to me at the moment. And let's grab this guy and have some nav links. And I think we're gonna want something like plan your visit. We don't want to do what I really hate is when like nav bars are like overloaded with a million stupid or generic buttons that nobody's gonna click. Like if you're coming to the planetarium to see an exhibition specifically with your kids, what do you want to know? Right? So you're gonna to want to know read some frequently asked questions, right? And maybe we're gonna need uh I don't really know what else would we need. Plan your visit, FAQs, uh, opening hours, something like that. And then let's grab our button, we'll put another version of the button up here. We'll make it a bit smaller and a bit more basic. And we'll just have this as a sticky nav. Uh, let's let's bump all this down a bit. So we'll go from 20 top and bottom to 16. Oh, I just froze there for a minute. Are we back? So yeah, 16, and then we'll go 32, and then we'll bump this down to 18, so it kind of matches the rest. I think it's still a bit too big, because maybe a 12 to the bottom. That's cool, and then let's grab these, auto layout them. I missed that one. Try again. Auto layout, we're gonna go 32 to start, or two, 32. And then we can grab both elements in our nav bar, so our logo and our nav items, auto layout those, double click to space between. I'm gonna go quite a lot of space. I'm gonna set it to the width of our artboard, which is 1440, and I'm gonna give it 120 left and right, because that's what our grids are gonna be. Uh, so we should probably put those on. Have we got them here? No, so let's make some quickly. We don't want grid, we want columns. We're going to go 12 columns with 120 margin. I literally just want to see the container size for now. So we can line this stuff up to the container there. That's all we really need those for. So Shift and G hides those. Now already this is kind of feeling pretty cool. Like I, you could probably show this to a client and go, yeah, we're thinking something like this. But let's tidy it up. So first thoughts are we want to create some depth, right? So we've got a couple of options of how to do that. We can bring this planet right to the front and kind of make it overlap some of the text, but we want to make sure we don't mess up this text. We can cover the big text a bit. So that's one option. So let's center this on our page and see where we are. I'm going to knock it down by eye like that. I think that's okay. Move this planet over a bit like this. Reshuffle the planets a little bit like this. It's a little guy. Do you know what planets these are? Anyone? Hmm? Uh, this one's Earth. This could be Mars. Um, I really, I need to go to this exhibition and, and learn what order they're in. I've definitely put them in the wrong order. So that's something that we'd probably go to the client. Hey, what's the actual order of the planets? Or we could um, use Google. It's probably a good idea. Um, right, other things that are going on that I think are wrong is the call to actions. I think this one up here, I think we want to change the orange to something a bit different. And I kind of want to get a blue in there. I just want to sit that one back a little bit to make this one on the left pop. I don't want people's eyes to be split left and right. And then that blue is quite nice. So I'm going to copy that hex code and we will make this maybe blue like that. And then I think what we want to do is we want to knock this text back. So we could uh, just knock the opacity back a bit, but it might be nicer if we soften it a bit and give it a bit of a blue. So if we grab like this same blue again, and then bring it up so it's a bit closer to white. Like that feels quite nice. And if we apply that to these, then we can only use pure white for our headlights, which means they are going to pop. And then up here, we can grab these two items and we'll just paste in that hex code again, just to soften those a bit, just to kind of push them back a little bit. And that's feeling pretty good. So we can delete this rubbish from the side. Something feels a bit off. I think that needs to come down a bit. And that's looking quite nice. So let's move this over. I think what we want to do is with that blue that we've just put, I think it's too blue. 
So I can just use my selection colors over here and then just drag the hex over a bit, make it a little bit whiter, and that works. Now, I'm going to actually label my files like a proper designer. I'm going to call this hero content. I'm going to lock it for now. What else have we got? What's this one? This is our nav bar. So I'll call that nav bar and I'll lock it. And then you'll see why in a moment I'm going to grab all of my planets and I'm going to group them. Call that planets and I'm going to lock that. Now I think we're going to add in some stars. But something doesn't feel right actually before we do stars. So it feels a little bit flat. The background feels a bit flat at the moment. And if we're thinking about space, space is just hugely vast. It's really deep. It's like the deepest thing ever. And we've used a flat color. So we could maybe use a gradient in the background. Maybe we could do it, get away with doing a radial gradient. Now I've locked everything on here, so I'm not accidentally selecting patterns. So if we grab a circle. We make a massive circle like this, move it to the back. I'm going to change its fill to gradient, and then instead of linear, we'll go radial. And then our, our outer color, we want to kind of fade out to the blue. So this one, if we grab this blue for now, and then just find a slightly lighter one. Like that kind of works. So that's already makes this a little bit more immersive. If we make it a bit bigger, kind of drop it over here a bit. Now if we look at the two of them side by side, the one on the right feels like it's got more depth, right? So let's delete that one. We're heading in the right direction. So let's label this and call this gradient, and I'm going to lock it. Now I think all we need to do is just add some stars in there. I'm pretty happy with this. So maybe this text could use a little bit of work. It might be a bit too light of a weight. Maybe we can bump it up weight, but let's just do some stars. Now, a couple of options of doing this. You could get like a image of stars, I guess, or an illustration of stars that somebody else has done, but we are designers. So let's design stars. There we go. Nice. Um, there's a star. That's a bit big. Let's make it go eight. This is something I used to do at my old job. I used to have to design like Christmas adverts all the time. And I used to have to draw snow on everything. Um, so if you hold Option or Alt, you can just drag out copies, right? And you can just start whacking these randomly all over the place. We don't put too much thought into this because if you look up at stars at night, I don't know if you've ever done that, you might notice that they are not in sort of like a grid pattern or anything like that. They are quite random. So we can literally just kind of random, but with a little bit of sort of artistic license to get it to feel balanced. And then if we're thinking about development, <laughs> we wouldn't want loads of stars in the text. So that would be something we would sort of maybe throw at the developer. <laughs> Which, which is fine, and like you should be working closely with the developer. And you can say that we want these stars all over the place, but obviously we don't want them to get in the way of the text. Have you got any ideas? And then you guys can kind of brainstorm. So if we're thinking about the the depth of space again, we don't want all the stars the same size. So I'm going to make some smaller ones like this. Yes, and we'll just do the same thing again. We're just going to just drag these stars out everywhere. Uh, if I was good at Video editing, I would you know speed this up for you, but I literally don't even know how to do that. Uh, I'm a web designer and developer. I just don't have the time to learn how to edit videos properly, but you know I've learned the basics, so I can put these videos together for you. Hope you appreciate it. Uh, da, 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 da. This is looking pretty neat. I like it. Let's get like a little cluster going. Nice, like a star sign. Maybe we could draw like the bear star sign or. Orion's belt. Let's do Orion's belt. Look. <laughs> sort of like that, isn't it? Is anyone going to notice? Um, how's that looking? Let's turn our UI off. I think composition wise, this is looking pretty tidy. So let's grab all of our stars, and because everything else is locked, we can just draw out a box like this. 
group them, uh, command R to rename, and we'll call it start, and then we'll lock those. And then, then let's unlock our nav bar, because that's what I'm, I think needs a bit of work. I don't know, what do you guys think? Medium? Oh, that's a bit better, isn't it? Let's grab this, guys. Make them medium. This is the kind of stuff, I mean, you can go back and forth on this stuff all day long. Um, let's lock the nav bar again, and let's unlock our hero content and just see what happens if we pop this into medium. And I think maybe we would then drop it down to 18. Okay, better before, bigger and thinner, I think that's fine. I think it's a wrap, guys. I think that looks pretty cool. Maybe I'm just going to move that gradient over a little bit more. So we'll just unlock it and I'm just going to arrow keys it down to the bottom right. Now, one thing you may notice here, which I'm starting to notice, which is a bit annoying, is these PNGs I've downloaded have got drop shadows on the planets. So from a style point of view, I don't know, I think you could get away with it, but I think we would probably download the PSD file for it and remove the shadow and we we'll kind of do two versions. But in the interest of speed here and not making you sit through like a two hour long video, this is good enough for now. So I hope you like this. I think this looks wicked. I think copywriting is really good too. Um, and then in terms of like interactions, I would try and do something like when you move the mouse over to the right, all of the planets kind of like shift a bit. So it's got a little bit of interaction, which may be hints at the, uh, it being like an interactive experience, which I'm sort of assuming that it is, because you know, you're going to be walking through a planetarium looking up. So that would all kind of tie the whole thing together. And yeah, that is the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And of course, I will leave a pinned comment down below to show you how to send us your stuff. And if you guys do want to send us designs to check out, we will literally review them on a YouTube video. It might be quite interesting, might be quite fun. Uh, don't be embarrassed. It's all good. We all started somewhere. And if you're amazing and you can do that stuff in this, please send it. We always love the inspiration and great, great work. And um, yeah, have a lovely day. See you in the next video.